Cracking. How do Blues? Admin Dan here with uh, City Dave for uh, the first time in God knows how long. He's a uh, yeah, long time, long time. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. Good to be speaking to you. So looking forward to the argument over the next 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, ho- hopefully this side series of the podcast won't, it won't have any arguments. I think most Blues will agree with us. Uh, but basically, Blues, we uh, I've started up uh, a side podcast like we have been doing with the transfer rumours and unpopular opinions and started another one up, um, which is basically titled Once a Blue, where basically every week I'm going to be picking out two or three players to discuss with a, an MIB admin this week, City Dave, um, about former Blues and their time at City, what they've achieved, what they did at the club, um, basically about them uh, and then we're going to discuss our views and uh, yeah just just what we thought of the players at the time um, and just to let everyone know what the players are we're going to start off with a fantastic young lad at the time when he signed for City which was Sean Wright Phillips um, who quite honestly legend the, 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 yeah, I, I could go away with not talking about him all I have to put his legend because he is um, yeah. We're also going to talk about Alexander Kolarov, or Alexander Kolarov. And to finish off, we're going to end up with an Irishman, Stephen Ireland. So, well, we'll three start. very good players. Yeah, yeah, all, all, all around that late Nazis time where they, where they all joined. So, a, a nice overall fixture. Uh, but yeah, we'll start off with Sean Wright Phillips. Obviously, everybody, every every blue knows Sean Wright Phillips. There's, there's, there's no getting past him. If you if you're my sort of age, early twenties, something like that, you grew up with Sean Wright Phillips being the main fan favourite. Um, he obviously started life off at Notts Forest, didn't he, in his youth career, and they 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 let him go, uh, and obviously City picked him up. Um, and yeah, he basically played for six clubs in his time. Uh, made a uh, 117 appearances um, throughout that, which wasn't really that, that much. Was over his over his two times at the club, it was 117 in total. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a lot more than that. I a lot more at the time. Surprised at that. Um, but that that that's a figure that I've kept coming across. So whether that's just Premier League, but it seems to tie in with some league cups and stuff like that. But that, that that's the appearance I got, and I thought with the time he's been with us, it's not that much. Um, he played, yeah, 117 times for the club, scoring 35 goals and made 36 senior England appearances, scoring six goals. You know what it is? You, you've you've got one number wrong. It's 217 appearances. 217 appearances. Is that, that that's probably where I went wrong. <laughs> 217. Yeah. So we played. 153 times between 99 and 2005 right. and then he did another 64 uh 2008 through 2011 but yeah the goals were right 35 goals uh in his time with city uh, uh that's that's late night research for you yeah. <laughs> but yeah so yeah that that, 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 that that makes a hell of a lot more sense because 117 appearances when i said it in my out loud then it didn't didn't compute very well no um but uh, yeah, he's, he joined City, made uh, his debut against Burnley in the League Cup. Do you remember that? I do. What I was going to say about Shawnee Wright was uh, I remember his possible, like, real, real debut in the first team. It was a friendly. It was Dennis Irwin's testimonial. Um, and I don't know what year that was. It was before he was actually in the first team. But um, around Manchester, around that time, You'd been hearing for these like 12 months or so, God, we've got Ian Wright's lad coming through and Forrest got rid of him and he's absolutely tearing it up in the reserves. And you you just kept hearing these little things in Manchester over time that and it was always right back then. It was always Ian Wright's son. It was always it was never Sean Wright Phillips. It was always we've got Ian Wright's son released by Forrest and he's he's, he's supposed to be really good. And there was even comments then about, you know, he's, he's pretty small, but, you know, you've got to give him a chance. And um, I'm telling you, that Dennis Irwin testimonial, he was the best player on the pitch by a long stretch. And I know for a fact that I think there was probably like 4,000 City fans there in the uh, at Old Trafford um, 
you know, in our end. But I know from like other parts of the ground, like United fans were just kind of taken aback at this tiny little lad. He was just running rings around people. He almost scored an absolute worldie. Mm. Um, he took it around about five, six players. And I think, I don't know who was in goal for United. I forget who it was now, but did did a pretty good save. But that was, you just knew then that, oh my gosh, we're onto something pretty special here. Um, so it was no surprise to me really after that, that I think that following season is when he really broke in and uh, and started being, you know, with Ireland. God, look at these players that we've got coming in from yeah. the academy now. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he, 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 he for me, I mean, that, that was the original uh, reason Notts Forest got rid of him, wasn't it? His height. They said he wasn't big enough and he wouldn't make it in the footballing world. And Not big enough. Yeah, yeah, you know, and this is Forest. And they, Forest have brought out some cracking players in their time, especially through the Youth Academy. And for them to turn around and say, like, like you said, that, that game, the testimonial, he, he showed what he was about. And yeah. for me, from, from my time of watching him and growing up watching him, he was always that player that, he wasn't. He never necessarily had a bad game. He may have underperformed in some games, but he would always give his all, and he was always noticeable on the pitch. No pun intended with the height. He was always. He always did something. You know, it was, it was something about his play, something about his character. Everybody knew it. But yeah, when because he started playing first team football for City when I started following football and supporting City. So he, he was, I know exactly what you mean by it was, it was just Ian Wright's son. And that, that's that's still to this day what happens with football, isn't it? You know, you've got um, all, all sorts of uh, famous footballers now that were originally known as such and such son, you know, they until they made a name for themselves. And he, he's definitely done his, uh, his dad proud of uh, what, what he's achieved, hasn't he? Yeah, um, I mean, just one of City's, best ever players to be perfectly yeah. honest I'd be surprised if any City fan uh, argued with that statement because when he got his move to Chelsea those couple of seasons uh, before he got his move to Chelsea uh, City I mean he was our catalyst he was our I mean you compare him now that he was kind of like our uh, an Aguero or a or a silver or someone like that, that he was the player who you wanted the ball to go to because you thought something might happen, whether that was an assist or, you know, or, or a goal himself, that he just seemed to have that little bit of something about him um, that, that that we really needed. And, you know, fair play to him, you know, really pushing himself. And, um, you know, I'm sure he got a lot of his advice from his dad as well to become the player uh, that he did as well. But, absolute uh, blue blood at the end of the day as well like he I you know I've, I've I've talked to him a couple of times you know I've met him but I you know I'd love to get him on a podcast so I could really ask him you know what was it my thinking is that it was his uh leaving forest that really drove him to be the success that he was that I'm gonna prove everyone wrong and I don't care if I'm five foot five I know I'm good enough yeah, and you know, and he showed that, and that's what pushed him. And and he, thankfully for City, it was us who gave him his opportunity. And he's, uh, I think he's he's thanked us in in spades for that. Not only with his goals and an assist, his attitude, but we got twenty one million for him as well from Chelsea, and we were about to go under. And yeah. he didn't want to go, but once that was explained to him, hey, we need the money, otherwise this club's going to go bankrupt. You know, we've all got to realise that without Sean Wright Phillips, Manchester City might may, may have, might have done a bury, for all we know. Yeah, that, that, that's one of my notes. I mean, as as well as being the footballer he was, he, he in some aspects, and I, I've always argued, I'll argue the case, in some aspects, he single-handedly saved City with yeah. his transfer. If he wasn't as good as he was... We wouldn't have got the money, and we, like you say, we we, we could have easily been a bury. Um, and you know, I think every City fan, bar his performances, is grateful to the bone for for what he did, and uh, just accepting that he needed to move to save the club that he loved. In effect, he, he still talks about City to this day. When, whenever he's uh, whenever he's talked to, he's very rare you hear about him nowadays. Uh, it's more about his uh, son that everybody hears about, Sean Mike Phillips' son. Um, yeah. He, he, he's uh, was it Mang 
De- Ma- De- De- Mario. DiMaggio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gio, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he, he seems to be turning, just like his dad, he seems to be ripping up the youth scene. Um, but yeah, for, for me, he, he single-handedly saved the club in a, in a dire straits moment. Um, but yeah, before, before moving to Chelsea, do you remember what record he broke in a space of four years? Care to have a guess? Uh, this is a city record. Or city it... record. Over the space of four years. Most number of consecutive appearances? No, success, successive something. He won four successive Young Player of the Year awards, which is a record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it was previously held by... It's got to be Lake or White or someone like that, surely. Ah. I can't, I can't remember who it was, but yeah, it was the record was free originally. Um, yeah, and he, he, he won four on the trot before leaving for Chelsea. Um, so it's, it's that that highlighted, you know. But w- would you class him as, but probably, hopefully, the successes of Foden. Would you say over the past two decades, Sean Wright Phillips is the most successful youth product City have pulled out to date? Easily. 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 Um... You know, when you look at how well he played for Manchester City anyway, when you look at the transfer fee that we got for him, he played for England while he was still at City. You know, he obviously played for England when he was at Chelsea as well. But, um, you know, even in his second period at the club when Mark Hughes brought him back, he was, again, one of our be- best players then as well. So, oh, absolutely for me right now, he's, he's, he's probably our best, uh, most successful academy product as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms yeah. of successful, I mean, we obviously signed him back from Chelsea before he finished his career for eight point five million. So we made twelve point five million at the time, which during the past what decade ago, twelve point five million for a club like City. Yes, we've had financial come in. Twelve point five million is a massive amount of money to make on a single player. From saying that, but his honours include uh, one first team, the old first team division title. Uh, he won one Premier League, unfortunately, with Chelsea, one FA Cup with Chelsea, and one Community Shield with Chelsea. He won one player of the senior senior player of the season at City, and at the time was the only player in the City's squad who won Team of the Year, Premier League Team of the Year as well. Um, so he, he's he's got a fair amount of honours to his name. Unfortunately, that the main one seems to be with Chelsea. It's a shame he never. Stuck around to win the title with City, but yeah, that's what it is. You know, I think it, I think if any player deserved it from the time at City during the the noughties, he, he was one of them that deserved a, a title. Just generally as with Chelsea, but and that's a shame as well. So I was just looking then. He was obviously at City uh, for 2011 uh, the FA Cup, but he was not in the squad. No. Uh, he, he, he did, did make some noticeable appearances early on in the year, but. Yeah, as far as my records go, he, he didn't play enough uh, games to get a, a, a medal. He which... didn't, and it's unfortunate because if there's one player that you know we've gone on to this massive success now, but if there's one player I think all City fans would have loved to have seen lift a trophy, it's probably Sean Wright Phillips. You know, his his, his heart's with the club, and uh, you know, even if he even if he'd just been on the bench for that FA Cup final day, for for him to walk up the steps and uh, and be part of that. That would have been, I think, that would have been a pinnacle of his career. To be honest, even though he won the the Premiership with Chelsea, that I think there's something to be said, you know, for that, isn't there? That you know, if it's the team near and dear to your heart, yeah. then lifting any kind of trophy with them has got to be special. That's you know, we talk about Gerrard and winning the the Premier League. I wouldn't have minded if Steven Gerrard had won the Premier League at some stage because you know he no. deserved it. He was a what yeah. one club man, and that's. Sean Wright Phillips would have been if we'd have had the money. You know, he would. He, he didn't want to go anywhere anyway. So yeah, it's a shame that he kind of missed out on that. But the accolades that he got from City fans, uh, you know, I'm sure mean a lot to him. Same, you know, with Dunny Monster, for example. You know, I think he won uh, Player of the Year four times on the trot. We didn't win anything. But I would like to think that it means something to these players when it's the fans who are turning around and saying, we just absolutely love you. Yeah. 
Yeah, without a doubt. He'll go down in history for the next 20, 30 odd years. Any young City fan will always know about Sean Wright. Right, right. Something Something that always stunned me about Sean Wright Phillips was how hard he could hit a ball. Yeah, (laughs) he had a bullet on him. He hit, he hit some shots, like not just the one against Tim Howard, you know, when we mm. won 4-1, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it might have been against Villa. He banged one in from like 30, 35 yards. And, you know, it went like a bullet. It was like that Alano free kick. It just went mm. like a bullet. And you think, how is a lad that small with good <laughs> technique able to hit a ball that hard and, you know, against a six foot four keeper and, you know, and just... Give him no chance at all with it. I mean, and he did that time and time again for us. You remember as well, the other bit that stands out for me with with, with Sweep is, uh, do you remember his debut back when Mark Hughes signed him was against Sunderland? And I think we beat them 4-2 mm. um, away. And I think he got I think he got two of them. Two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And <laughs> everyone was like, where have you been, Sean? Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, because we were missing that. We were... I've always liked a tricky player and I don't think you get anything. Well, you might say Martin Petrov. I, I get that. But in that mould again of, of tricky players, professional players, you know, six foot plus guys, they don't like defending, know. you know, little guys who are good on the ball, you know, Bernabia, Sean Wright Phillips, you know, Berkovich, Aguero, Merlin don't like it. And I, I, I put Wright Phillips into that category really of just being that tricky lad with a hell of a shot of him, who love the club. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's rare as well nowadays you get a player like that in, in the more modern era. It's very rare you get a player like that. But uh, but yeah, what, what a player to kick us off with. You know, Shawnee Wright Phillips. Jordan Can't Wright. do much better for him. <laughs> no, absolutely not. The next, next one is Serbian maestro, left-back Alexander Kolarov. Love it. Now, he signed for City in 2010. I remember it clear as day because obviously we've been through a period. This was that was part of the transitioning period where we were starting to get these names. And I remember at the time when we were signing all the bigger names, Kolarov was one of them. We we originally signed him from Lazio, where nobody had not really heard of him. You know, he he, he played a few games for uh, Serbia at the time and made a name for himself slightly with Lazio and obviously signed for City um, for £16 million. Um, he made 165 appearances, which again, that one I did double-check, um, over seven years, and has six goals to his name. I thought it was a hell of a lot more than that. He played 90 times for Serbia uh, and scoring 11 goals. So it, it shows how much of a... Uh, a goal threat he was for a, a wing back. Um, made his debut against Spurs in a nil nil uh, on the 14th of August in 2010 and got his four, first goal against Leicester in an FA Cup tie when we won 4 2. And I was at that game. And that, that game, because I went to every FA Cup game during our first FA Cup uh, run, bar the semi final and the final. Can you believe that? Um, and <laughs> That goal throughout all the knockout stages up to the semi final and the final, that goal is the only goal I remember because it was that it was well out of the penalty box and it was a late night game, obviously. And he took the shot and it fizzed along the ground and into the back of the net. And it was a hell of a shot. No, nobody ever really remembers it because it wasn't a world class, it wasn't up in the air, a top corner, it was just a fizzing shot right across. And for, for me, that's probably one of his best goals. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. What, what what a player he was. What what are your fond memories of him? Yeah, he didn't uh, he didn't seem to uh, score a bad goal in my opinion for City. They all seemed to be you know free kick or to your point just like arrowed into a top corner or whatever. It's not su- no surprise that he scored quite a few for Serbia as well because I think as captain, I think I think he was in charge of free kicks as well, wasn't he for them too? Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, I've got quite a few memories of Collar off. Number one being, I, I learnt probably before most other people that we were signing him. So in 2010, uh, that's when City were out here in Portland uh, doing their pre-season training. And I was talking to Chris Bailey, 
mm. and Chris Bailey was saying, oh, you know, it's not common knowledge yet, but we, we're just about to announce the signing of uh, of, of Kolarov from uh, for Lazio. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't do it in time so we could actually fly out here to uh, to the States and kind of start because I'd love to have uh, love to have met him then. I have subsequently met him. Oh, yeah, uh, we've seen but, the photos of him nearly running you down in Hyde. Yeah, he, um, you know, I talked to a couple of uh, City players when, you know, when I found out we were signing him and they knew a little bit of a couple of things about him, came with a very, very good pedigree. Um, you know, a Mancini knew his stuff, I think, about defenders uh, as well and knew that he was the kind of player, tough player uh, that we wanted. A um, lot more, uh, you know, this is a bit of a cliche, but you know, a lot of the City fans say this, and I do agree with it, much better going forward uh, than, the, than at the back. I think, you know, in a, in a for me, a Pep Guardiola team, I think they probably, Pep probably would have played Kolarov more as a left wing back rather yeah. than a, rather than a left back, because he was comfortable uh, get, getting forward. Not to say he was a bad defender, but that was just, I think that was more of his, maybe a little bit more of his natural game, that he liked getting up, liked supporting the attacks, uh, liked getting those balls in the box, liked taking free kicks, and he was he was bloody good at them as well. Um, and if anyone listened to the uh, podcast uh, uh, interview that we did yesterday with Sharon Latham, uh, the, who was the city photographer for several years, uh, Sharon, as with probably many other females and some males, as she pointed out as well. Alexander Kolarov was pretty popular uh, yes. with the females yes. uh, as well. Um, you know, I think Sharon kind of swooned quite a, quite a bit at, at Alexander. So, yeah, he had those Serbian Eastern European looks going on. And, uh, you know, I think what Sharon said yesterday uh, beneath the she said something like beneath the, uh, the, the, the tough Siberian uh, exterior is, you know, is the heart of a, of a child or something like that. That um, I met him the one time um, in, uh, in Hale in Manchester and uh, he, he was getting some money out of a cash machine. And I just kind of walked up to him and asked, you know, hey, I'm a city fan, you know, can I have my photograph? And he couldn't have been, couldn't have been nicer with me, you know, couldn't this, uh, you know, how he portrayed himself as this tough Serbian and, you know, don't come near me and whatever. Uh, he, he didn't seem to be like that at all, um, you know, off, off the pitch, just just a genuinely um, nice guy. And at the end of the day, a very, very, very good football player. And um, one that I'm, I'm very, very glad that we had at that time at City. You know, how many, what did he win with us? I know he won at least one. He uh, won... Uh, let's just see. Won one FA two Cup, Premier two Premier Leagues, two League Cups, and a FA Community Shield of us. I mean, fair play. I mean, yeah. Good For money, saying, money, my opinion, that that that, that FA Cup uh, 2011 season, that he was first choice left back throughout that season, and obviously in the 2011-2012 campaign, and there from was Clichy came in, um, and. You know, Kalishi was more known for his defending, and you know, Mancini obviously wanted to toss it up. And with Kalishi playing the well he did, as well as he did Kolarov, obviously, he, he came as that utility backup player, didn't he, o over the time? Yeah. And uh, for saying he won two Premier Leagues, two League Cups, and a Community Shield after being a first choice left back shows how how well he did to to stay in the club and you know challenge for that left back uh, place. And I mean. Even I, I was gutted when he left in 2017 to join Roma, um, just because of who he was. It's like you said, he was an all-round nice guy. Everyone knew about him. You've seen behind the scenes with City TV and stuff like that. You, you know, he had the antics. He was very much a, a get-along-with type person. Yeah. Um, but I think everyone sort of shied away from admitting, yes, he was more of an attacking player, but he was still a very good player. Uh, at, even when he left City, I mean, look at look at what he's won after um, with City, uh, with Lazio, should I say? Before he won the Coppa Italia and the Super Coppa Italiana before joining City, uh, and he was first choice for Lazio then. Um, but since leaving to join Roma, he's won the Team of the Year, uh, yep. 
to the whole Serie A. He, he, he was the first uh, Serbian player to be in the team of the year for 20 years, I think. Um, so he, he, he's, he definitely still had it in his locker, you know. And to say how good a player he was, it's sort of an understatement, really, because it, it, it's a tricky one, isn't it, really? He, he was a good player, but he just wasn't that... I think maybe being too genuine and too nice was the reason he's not really regarded as that one that everyone sort of remembers as a good player, in my no, eyes. I, I, I totally agree. And if, for, for me, it would be... And I'm not uh, having a go at Mancini in any way. Any way absolute god uh, to me, Mancini. It Wouldn't it be really interesting to see what Pep Guardiola would do with a player like Kolarov, who... Yeah. Pep, Pep likes a, a versatile player. We all know that. And if there was anyone around that era who was versatile, you know, think of Zinchenko, for instance. Uh, you know, Kolarov and Zinchenko could be somewhat similar in some ways. That um, I think Pep Guardiola would have probably, with a player like Kolarov, been able to find a slot for him or yeah. find him a place in the team probably most weeks, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 a workhorse as well, wasn't he? And Pep loves workhorses. You know, he very very rarely shied away from a game. He, he was always, for me, I always remember him as being up for the big games. Whenever he played oh, yeah. in the big game, he never had a quiet game. He was always that one that was like proper. I remember, I think it was, oh, it was, uh, it was two thousand fifteen or two thousand sixteen when we beat United at their place. Mm-hmm. He, he he was you know for saying he he, he was out of favour in a sense to, to cliche he, he was one of the best players on the pitch I can't I can't remember what 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 year it was but I remember it clear as day the game and he, he was everywhere and yeah. yeah I completely agree Pep would have found it I mean it, it, no in Pep he would have probably tried him a left wing you know he probably could have done it you know he was, he was always good for a good cross as well so he's, yeah. He's, I'll always remember him as one of the best left backs in the last twenty years of City. It's, he, he was, you know. I mean, if we, I mean, we 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 do um, we discuss well, argue in some respects on our private chats, don't we, about our teams, uh, our all-time City teams, our all-time Premier League team uh, of City, and it's always a toss-up between Kolarov and Clichy, and we always. Most of us tend to pick Clichy, but we always say it's very close with Kolarov. You know, yeah, um, you're going to get what you want. Do you want, you know, probably a little bit more defending, keep clean sheets with cliche, or do you want to go the other way? And do you want to have more of a possibility of, of, of getting a couple of goals from from Kolarov? And that's that's what you've got to bear in mind. You can kind of weigh it both ways. But, um, yeah, for me, one of uh, a, an incredibly good signing. And I, I think, you know, as me, we, we all kind of argue about in the in the past as well, should have got more money for him. Yeah. Should have got more money for him when he when he left for Roma. That's, in, in my opinion, that's twice that Roma have done us over. They got Edin Dzeko for an absolute steal, who's scored more for Roma now than he did for City. Yeah, in a uh, much shorter Col- period. Kolarov, I think they got him for like two and a half, three million, something like that. Just absolute peanuts. And it shows you he's 34 and he's still... He's still still playing he's still a first team starter he's still banging in goals uh as we all know really good mates with Ed in Dzeko when I and we know with Dzeko he's got a very big soft spot for Manchester City I I, I think Kolarov has as well you know if you look he's he played more times for City than any other team he's played for and I think that means something to players I think a lot of the time that if you spent the time there and you've had a good time and you have um you've won trophies you're always going to look back fondly on that and have a little bit of a soft spot for him. And, you know, the other bit that Sharon was saying to us yesterday, which w- was really, really interesting for Tom and I to hear, was this this squad that Kolarov was in, she said that that was it. There was such a team camaraderie between them, like a real team bonding, none of this siloing of, you know, Serbians, you know, in, in one corner of the cafe and, you know, the English players here and whatever. You know, she told me and Tom yesterday that, you know, the hearts, you know, the English and the Spanish and the Belgian and, you know, all these different nations, they just came together as a team. And she said that she'd never seen anything like it. No. And, you know, color ops, you know, in that, that they embraced Manchester life and, um, you know, won us an absolute bucket load of trophies. So thank you. 
Yeah. Well, I couldn't have ended that better myself, to be fair. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a Serbian sweetheart, I think we can call Absolutely. him, can't we? <laughs> right, moving on to the final one, who, for me, is, in my eyes, I've always seen him as the one that got away in terms of potential, but also a troubled player, which is Stephen Ireland. Um, I, 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 I ought... Real, real gifted, talented player. You don't get... He just played the game differently to yeah. everyone else at City. He had time on... He, he was, uh, you know, he was probably our Irish version of, of, of David Silva. I'm not saying he was as good as David Silva, <laughs> but he had that he had that to him that he just it just seemed to come very very naturally to him uh the yeah. game i think i think you hit the nail on the head there dan that i think when you have not genius but someone who is that talented they seem to they seem to have a lot going on in the in, in their head and and it, and it messes with them a little bit yeah, well, that explains the hair loss, really, doesn't yeah. it, to be fair? Everyone remembers the hair flopping about all over and all of a sudden one day turned up for the season all shaved off, didn't it? A bit like me, really, you know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I could make it in the City squad, you don't know. But um, Obviously, he, he began life for City in the Youth Academy, signed when he was 15 years old back in 2001. Makes you feel old now, doesn't it? Um, and he made his, uh, he's made his debut in 2015. And his first goal... If you remember, it was a 20-yard volley against Sheffield United back in 2005. And I remember that goal because nobody had really heard of Ireland. And it just, the goal just came out of nowhere. And it was the only goal of that game. And it was an absolute belter of a volley. And I'd still say his first goal was probably his best goal. Um but at the same time, he did get his hand full in a fair few goals. I mean, to take you to 2007, 2008, uh, mm. this goal wasn't remembered for his goal. Uh, it was against Sunderland, uh, <laughs> to which he scored the goal. And I'm sure many Blues, and with Dave laughing, he already remembers it, ran over to the supporters and dropped his pants, didn't he? Pants. To reveal Superman. <laughs> just brilliant and that's what it's all about as uh, as well he was just uh you know one of us to an extent and uh he was just trying to have a bit of a laugh with it so fair play with me. i've got so much time for um stephen island i i really have i think you know he said in quite a few interviews that one of his big struggles at manchester city was i think he was a dad yeah. by the age of 18 and on absolutely no money uh 2005 it's obviously when city had absolutely no money whatsoever i think they were basically still paying him yes wages of you know 90 quid a week and he's got it, it, it was still trial period when he first started off it was it was the goal it, i think he scored about three goals which earned him a four-year permanent contract he was still on trial while playing for city in the first team there was some contract sort of thing going on which allowed him to, yeah yeah it's unbelievable. So to have all that going on as a really young lad trying to make your way as a professional and be a dad, as you well know now as well, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be that, and Stephen Ireland's really commented on that um, a, a lot, but a beautifully talented player. And I'll, I'll go back to Pep Guardiola again. I, I bet you Pep Guardiola with a player like that. He, or, or what I would say is Pep Guardiola would love a player like Stephen Ireland because it just came naturally to him. Just, yeah. uh, just, just gifted, uh, read the play incredibly well for someone so young. Uh, and uh, I think he'll always have a, a, a pretty deep place in City fans' hearts because, you know, if you when you look back at his history... He was that good in Ireland when he got, you know, brought across. He turned down Liverpool, he turned down United to come to City. You know, everyone was after him. Yeah. And he felt, I think he said in some interview, that the reason he picked us, it felt more like a family. And he he, did, he wasn't going to miss family as much because family for Stephen Ireland is a huge thing, yeah. as you know, as, as, as we all know. Uh, and, you know, I think he felt that. Uh, when he joined Manchester City and then started making his way. 
And um, I think fans always really love to hear that and appreciate that from from players that, you know, you guys really, really looked after me. And, you know, as soon as he got past that, you know, trial curve and was on decent money, he, um, I think he, he, he flourished into an incredibly good player for us. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll go back to your words. He was sort of that David Silver esque type player back in back in uh, uh, fifteen years ago. You know, we, we we all saw him as that talent that never progressed to what it should rightfully have done. You know, he had the potential, and in some retrospects, he lived up to it in some games, but he just never really followed it on. Um, but again, the controversy was sort of a factor for me. I think I think he. As much as he was a fun-filled guy, we obviously know uh, his, his island, um, well, you could say problem, controversy, you know, he he, uh, he played only six appearances for Ireland, but that's only because, uh, I mean, you, you probably know it better than me. Um, he, he, well, I, I think you'll probably put it a bit better than I would. I'd probably come out and say it bluntly. So uh, why, why, why did he uh, fall out of favour of Ireland? Well, you know, essentially you had the whole thing with his, my grandma's died and, you know, and then all that came out in the media of being uh, true. And he was that put down by the media, you know, for what he'd done, uh, even though that he apologised, that there was no coming back from it. And he just basically had to say, look, you didn't really support me during this whole thing. I know I was in the wrong, but you didn't really offer me any support at all. You threw me under the bus. Why am I going to play for Republic of Ireland again? And I think that really was his, was his stance. And that is a shame on Republic of Ireland because again, you, you don't get footballers like that coming along that often. And he would have been a real nice addition to that Republic of Ireland team. He'd be a nice addition to any team, to be perfectly honest. He's just a, 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 a good footballer. Yeah, I think it's because obviously when when I was when I was growing up with uh, well watching him play at the time, it, all the media sort of made you believe it was he, he was sort of like this sick-minded person that was using his grandma's death to get out of anything and stuff like that, and that, that's how it was portrayed. And completely agree, he, he was sort of he wasn't defended at all. He was left to do it on his own and left to deal with everything, you know, and n- nobody really supported him. Um, but to yeah, completely agree by the fact that a massive waste of potential by Ireland, you know, that they could have done so much, they could have got so much re- reputation, you know, having someone like him, like I said, they don't come around often, especially for the likes of Republic of Ireland. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for, for saying he, 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 he carried on playing very well when he left City, you know, he, he, he joined Villa in 2010, as you know. Um, after making 138 appearances in the five years of senior football at City, he scored 16 goals, which I thought is about 16, uh, which is about six more than what I thought he would have scored. So, at the same time, a lot of, lot of uh, goals going under the radar, and uh, he scored four goals and six appearances for Ireland as well. So, uh, you could tell he was definitely one for the attack minded, but um, yeah. his honours include. One Irish Player of the Year, whether you count that as a big honour, I don't know. I've not really known much about the Irish Player of the Year system. Um, player of the Season for Man City. And also, considering where Villa were at the time, he also got uh, Supporters Player of the Year for Villa. At Villa at the time, for Villa. You know, it showed how much of a, a lovely guy he was at the same time, you know. It, it takes a lot for a player who earns big bucks, all players do, to win the trust and favouritism of supporters. And Villa's at, Villa's supporters are easy going. You've got to do a lot. And he, he, he did that for me. And, uh, and the Villas are lucky to uh, to get him off City for the price they did as well. Yeah, Not not even a price, I don't think. I can't remember what, what he left for, if anything. Let me see. I don't think it was very much. Yeah, I think you're right. It could be uh, the f- uh, final price was eight million in part exchange for Milner. There you see, go. See that that, that 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 although Milner at the time was a very good player, that that's that's nothing for Ireland in, no, in retrospect of what he was. You know, it's, it, it, we could have got a hell of a lot more. I seem to remember. You know, when he broke through and had, you know, a couple of seasons, you know, his massive season for us 
looking at his stats was uh, the 2008-2009 season. In the Premier League, he played 35 times and scored nine goals. Yeah. In that season, in total, he played 50 times. Yeah. That's basically every, any time Manchester City played, he played and yeah. scored 13 goals. And I, I, I seem to remember, I'm going back a long way, but I seem to remember that, you know, the Uniteds and the Liverpools, you know, were, were after in them and were willing to pay big bucks for him because he was he was that good. Um, it's just a shame for him, really. He just kind of ran out of steam for us. And, uh, you know, and I know he started picking up some injuries then, but um, I met him out here. Uh, he came out for the preseason training in uh, 2010. And honestly, Dan, he was one of the nicest players that, you know, I met. And what I really liked about him is, you know, as I've talked to you about before, that I had my kids with me pretty much for the whole two weeks that they were here, uh, who were four and two at the time. And Ireland was just, you know, he talked to me, but what he really wanted to know was he wanted to mess around with the kids and, you know, kick the ball with them. Because then he kept saying to me, God, I miss my family so much, you know, how old are your two kids? And, you know, do you mind if I have, you know, kick a kick a ball around with them? And, you know, I'm just kind of looking like you're a multi-million pound player earning hundreds of thousands of pounds every year. And, you you know, you're just a, a, a nice guy who wants to talk about family. And that that's why I said before that you can just tell that that means everything to him. You know, it was family first. City football, everything else, uh, you know, came after. Um, yeah. And I really appreciated that about him. I've got to tell you as well that what, that preseason training, I mean, this is where you had the Bellamy's, the Adebayors, the Vinnies, Lescott, Micah, you know, that 2011 FA Cup squad were here and I watched them for two weeks. He was honestly, Dan, one of the better players. And, and I know mm. they were on training. I get that. But he was just a beautiful player to watch. He, he, he really was. He just And you could see as well all the players around him like, God, this, this, he, he, got, he had a good touch. He just knew what to do with the ball. Yeah. It's, 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 for me, his downfall his career was Mancini. You know, like, like you said, the, the, the 09 season, he was arguably Mark Hughes' most important player that season. Uh, yeah. And obviously, when Mancini came, we had the likes of De Jong, Barry, uh, you know, and we were interested in Milner at the time, and obviously, eventually, he left for Milner. It, it, it was getting, including with the injuries, like you said, on top. He, in some retrospect, he was being forced out due to his own downfall of injuries, if you can say, but it, it was unfair on him because of what he'd given to the club. You know, it was only two seasons ago prior to him leaving that he had that fantastic season. You know, a couple of injuries ain't going to affect you. I mean, look at Vincent Company. Vincent Company had an injury hit career, and he went on to be probably one of the greatest centre backs the Premier League's ever seen. And exactly. I personally thought if Ireland had had his chance under Mancini, if he'd got his fitness right, his injury situation right, and just focused down again, he could have been up there and played until 2014, 2015. You know, yeah, it's just a shame he didn't. But in in some respects, I'm glad he left when he did because at least we still got them fond memories of him being the great player that he was. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of... of... Oh, dear. Sean Wright Phillips and uh, Stephen Island were both repurchased by managers. Sean Wright Phillips, Mark Hughes, got him for QPR. Stephen Ireland, Mark Hughes, got him for Stoke. So even though we've kind of said Mark Hughes maybe isn't the greatest coach that we've, you know, that, that we've ever had, he had seen something in Wright Phillips and Stephen Ireland and gone, you know what? I need that kind of player at, at you know at, at QPR or at, or at Stoke, and that's got to that's got to speak volumes uh, to a player when they know a, a player of certainly of Mark Hughes's caliber that when they come a calling for you and know you can come and do a job for me here, yeah, and that just shows what a decent player they are, you know. Yeah, and it sh shows the mentality and how how 
drawn to a person they can be to work with a player at multiple clubs, uh, work with a manager at multiple clubs and still retain that, I'd say friendship, you know, you've got to have friendship with a manager to play for him, haven't you, in a sense, you know, you, you've got to be on the good side and if you keep getting picked at different clubs, like these, it's like the Harry Redknapp thing, wasn't it, really? Wherever he seemed to win, he always used to take Crouch and Defoe with him and stuff like that and they, they always worked for him. For me, I, I thought Ireland was good for Stoke. He, he didn't get the rec- recognition, I think, they deserve. Stoke were a really struggling club at the time and... Yeah. You know, he, he had his good games, he had his bad games. What Stoke City player that season and that time didn't, you know. And again, it goes back to my point. I, w- I wish he'd stayed at City because he could have made a real name for himself. But it's, like I say, at the same time, the fond memories. And he must have been a really good lad behind the bars for, for Mark Hughes to keep buying him, you know. And uh, like you said, Mark Hughes wasn't one of these managers. Yes, he, he we could, we've had the arguments and controversies controversies of whether Mark Hughes is a good coach, but you know Mark Hughes is one a great player for United. You know everyone knows him for being a good player, not necessarily a good manager, but he knew a player when he knew a player, and he like you say he bought so many title and FA Cup winning players for City, and for him to keep picking the likes of Ireland shows how early his progression started and yeah he'll go down for me as one of City's important lost prodigies you can say yeah probably honestly because he played a lot more games probably even more so than Michael Johnson yeah uh, you know Michael Johnson had all the talent in the world but we well, I mean we saw it basically for a season uh, yeah. with Michael Johnson that was it Stephen Ireland had a more longevity than that at, at, at City and He's certainly a player for me that, you know, if Manchester City group, you know, keeps expanding and, um, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that we, we, we're going to end up buying some little club in, in, in Ireland. Mm. I'm all for, as you know, let's get our ex-players in, people who actually love that blue shirt and let's get them coaching, you know, these, you know, these, these players in, in their home country and then, you know, telling them what it means to wear that blue shirt and then let's get them over, you know, to match to, you know, playing playing for the first team. And I'd love to see that with Hendry. I'd love to see that with Macken, you know, with with Ireland, with with Wright Phillips, with Zabba. You know, I, I think that's the bit that Manchester City are missing now. And I know we're going to do a big podcast on this eventually, but I, I think that's the last piece of the puzzle for Manchester City is to get these players who obviously have a real love for Manchester City and bring them back into the fold. And 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 even if it's just at the academy level, like talking to these young lads and saying, this is the blue shirt you're wearing here. This is what you need to do to, you know, to put, if you want to get in Pep's team, this, this is what you need to do. Um, you know, nothing wrong with Jason Wilcox, Gareth Taylor, you know, I get all that, but I just think if you've got these players who've been there and done it and worn that shirt with with pride, I I think that would really have a, a such a good impact on all these lads that we've got. You know, we're getting all this cream of talent from all over the world, and they don't know who Manchester City are. No. You know, we're not stupid. They don't know. They know who Pep Guardiola is. They know about the project. Yeah, yeah. But, but they don't know the real club behind it all got a Stephen Island, you've got a Paul Lake, you know, a Redmond, a White, a Zabba, a Vinny, um, you know, who's there kind of saying, you know, look, this this is the shirt, this is what you this this is what it's all about. I think you we would see less of these academy players actually just leaving and you know and going elsewhere and actually really forcing the way through yeah. uh, into the team because that's what Wright Phillips and Stephen Island did. And I know we were a different squad then, I get that, but they forced the way in and then they just went, Well, I'm not losing my spot now. I'm gonna I'm 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 here. I'm you know, I'm gonna play out of my skin and lo and behold, Wright Phillips and Ireland become two of our best ever players. Yeah. But I c I couldn't have summed that up any perfectly. Any more perfect if I if I tried that that that's exactly what I think every blue wants and we want that car that that original car and the true with prior to money prior shake owners the true city car you know not not just the money factor not not that all about the players not all about the wages the 
proper family football legacy back at City and people like you say play for the heart of the club and on a side note that badge you play for the badge that badge F yeah going back to what you always say FC make it FC we're a football club we're not a bit we, we are a business but we're a football club primarily let's get these players training players up for the club hands down and they want to do it and that's the interesting thing as well they 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 want to do it like they want they want to give something back you know god that that interview that we had with John Macken you know 2 3 weeks ago um you know he's not a Radcliffe borough anymore god i would I just wish that manchester city were watching that you know our little podcast and seeing that and going god we've got a player who you know played for over 50 times for the club you know played under kevin keegan you know won the won the championship with us Scored in the derby, scored one of the most famous FA Cup goals of all time. He's a mank, you know. He's already got coaching ability. He looked, you know, when when Tom asked him, so you know, why did you want to leave Preston, uh, you know, when you were basically on the same number of points of a City? And John Macken just looked at us and went, uh, because it was Manchester City, yeah. like, what? <laughs> and, you know. And, yeah. Tom kind of goes, well, goosebumps, and that's that's what we want. And yeah. Getting these Mackens in, the Hendries, the, the Islands, the Wright Phillips, where the club means something to them, and to pass that knowledge on to that to, to that next level, I th- I think that's the one piece that we are really missing at, at Manchester City as a, as a group right now. Get yeah. why isn't why isn't John Macken or why isn't um, Colin Hendry? Uh, managing, you know, the, the head coach of New York City FC. You know, why aren't we doing that and sending that, you know, that, is it Lorient or something like that? And this French team who we've just bought, a Belgian team who went Locken or something? Uh, yeah, it's Belgium. Uh, lo- lo- something Locken like that. Or something. <laughs> but why aren't we, why aren't we, I mean, for me, I would be getting Pablo Zabaleta now. He's pretty much, I don't know if he's going back to West Ham anyway. Look, do you want to go be player manager? Of, yeah. of of Locken, tell them what it means to be you know part of this Manchester City group. Get your experience and then and then get your ass back to Manchester. You just know a Zabaleta, an Island, a Wright Phillips would be absolutely all over that kind of thing. Yeah, and hopefully we've got that with Vinny and Anderlecht. You know, that Anderlecht is a hell of a producer for young talent. And if Vinny, I mean Vinny is a prime example of a player that played with City on his sleeves and blew through his blue in his blood, really. Then it? it's it's like you say that having that, that outlook. If we're getting all these teams as part as a City corporate, we want to be getting them to the central hub, don't we? Really, it's, yeah, it's, the, it's sure, the main I'm- thing. That that's always been my thinking that you know, and when we've had our group chats, that we've got what nine clubs under us now. The the whole goal is that we get the cream of that talent to eventually be playing for Manchester City Football Club first team. That's the old overall goal. But my thinking is over time that rather than us loaning some of these players out to a Leeds United or Scunthorpe or whatever it might be. Surely the thinking is that eventually we're just going to send these players off to our other our other sister clubs and yeah. do it that way um, and then gain that experience and then they come back to Manchester City first team. And that's why I think these ex-players would be so incredibly important to to have in charge at all these other clubs that, that, that we've got. You know, so they're reporting back to Pep or whoever whoever's in charge and you know, you're able to say, geez, you know, with Jack Harrison or whatever, God, he's come on leaps and bounds in the last, yeah. you know, few months. You, you need you need to get him back, you know, yeah. back back in the first team there. And um, as I say, that for me is the last piece of the puzzle for City that I think we need to bring more of our ex-players in and, and get them in a coaching capacity all, all around the world. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I could, again, couldn't have put that any better. But uh, yeah, so what 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 a chat for our first uh, first one to blue series. You picked Dan, absolutely amazing players you picked. I'm I'm glad Ireland branched off as some, a whole different topic because I think that's a topic we've never really covered before, um, and I, I, I'm glad that did. But yeah, what we started off showing out Phillips, Alexander Kolarov, and Stephen Ireland for the first uh, form of uh, once a blue series. So who knows? We might have another big uh, player topic to go from another next three. So uh, yeah. you never know. You might be joining me for that, Dave. 
And if anyone listening to this has got any way we can get hold of these three players and, and get them on a podcast interview, me and Dan are all ears because we would love to chat with them. Every chat that we've had with an ex-player up to yet has been absolutely fantastic. So they seem to really enjoy it. And um, yeah, if you've got any tips of how we can get hold of those three players, please let us know because we'd, we'd love to have them on a show. Without question, without question. Right, mate. Thank you very much right. for coming on. And yeah, uh, no take care. And we'll probably see you hopefully in a much shorter notice on the next podcast. Sounds good. Take care, Dan. Take care, buddy. All the best, boys. Bye.